20% of businesses failed during the first two years of being open, 45% during the first five years, and 65% during the first 10 years. Only 25% of new businesses make it to 15 years or more. Now with all the get rich quick schemes out there and online marketers flaunting their wealth, what are the legitimate businesses that make people the most money? Now I've done some research into this and I think you're going to find it interesting. I even found out what some of these businesses were making. Now, if you're new here, my name is Tark Johnson. I had nine failed businesses from the ages of 18 to 27. And since then, my last three businesses have all done seven figures in sales. That all started when I bought my first franchise in 2015. And one of my missions is to help decrease the high failure rate of small business owners that I experience. But enough about me, let's talk business. Look, the reality is business owners get rich in one of two ways. The first is the cash flow that the business generates. So as an example, a buddy of mine owned a fire and water restoration company. Basically, they would help restore homes after water damage or fire damage. And so he started the business from scratch and got the business up to doing about $12 million a year in sales. He had about a 15% profit margin as he scaled it up because he had all this infrastructure and vehicles, 50 employees, benefits that he's paying. Well, that's still about $1.8 million in cash flow a year from that business. But that doesn't mean that the business will make you rich. You still need to maintain the habit of spending less than you make. Now, my buddy didn't have a Lamborghini or Ferrari, and outside of him living in a pretty nice house, he was just a humble everyday guy that by meeting him on the street, you would have no idea that he was wealthy. So this leads us into business number one, which are service businesses, AKA boring businesses landscaping, plumbing, HVAC, fire and water restoration businesses that I mentioned before. Most people go, "Ugh, I don't wanna own a business like that. It's not cool. It's not my passion. Cool, stay broke then. In all seriousness, these are businesses that are needs and not wants. So despite what's going on in the economy, they can get you paid. The second business are franchises but not the type that you are thinking. What's weird to me is that there's people who have such a strong opinion on franchises, saying number one, franchises aren't a real business, and number two, the only person they make rich is the person who started it. Isn't it funny when people say things with confidence and have absolutely no data or facts to back it up? The reality is a lot of the franchises that create the most wealth aren't what you think they are. They are not food related at all. And I'll prove it to you in a minute and show you some numbers of franchisees and franchise owners who are getting rich and making a lot of money, where it's not just making the franchisor a bunch of money. But there are two ways to make money with franchises. So first, you can be a franchisee, which is the person buying the franchise license and leveraging a brand and system that's already been created. That's what I did. I own multiple franchises across the country, and although they did not make me rich, I did do over $2.7 million in sales, and after a few years, I was able to successfully sell those businesses. So I used it as a stepping stone into the business that I really wanted to create from the beginning, which I'll cover later on in this video. Now, the second way that you can make money in franchising is you can become the franchisor, meaning you can create the franchise brand and recruit franchise owners. Now get this, there are so many of those service businesses, AKA boring businesses that are franchises. So some of you may go, hmm, yeah. I mean, I, I like the idea of owning a service business and I'm, I'm open-minded to that, but I have no idea where to start. I have no idea how to run it, what to do. I don't have experience with that. Well, that's when people buy franchises. As an example, there's a garage installation and service company where the top franchisee does $36.8 million a year in sales. So to the people commenting out there that franchises only make the person who started the franchise company rich, I call bullshit. The average franchise owner does $5.2 million a year in sales in that specific business. There's over 100 franchisees in that business. There's a company that does blinds and curtains that you've probably heard of that is a franchise. And the average franchise owner who only owns one territory does over $900,000 a year in sales. And owners who own about two territories do about $1.4 million in sales. 
I have another buddy of mine who owns seven territories of that specific franchise. He owns five in California and two in Tennessee. Tell him that franchise owners are not making money and not getting rich. I think he would say otherwise. And what happens is when you have a business that has that many territories and you have that many employees and you have layers of management, the less active you are in it, the higher multiple that you can sell it for. So some of these businesses and that are service-based franchises, you know, they can sell for eight to 10 times profits which is pretty damn significant. Now I actually put together a 17 page PDF breaking down five low cost franchises that all make over $1 million a year for their franchisees. You can grab it for free. The link is in the description below, or you can go to franchiseempire.com forward slash low cost to get it. Now the real money in any business often comes from selling the business. Remember my buddy who owned a fire and water restoration company? Well, after owning that business for 10 years and getting it up to $12 million a year in sales, he sold it to a private equity company for nearly $10 million. Now a guy that I had on my podcast owned over 30 Sonic franchises and all of the real estate. And at one point, right before they sold it to a private equity company, they were doing $72 million a year in sales. Again, remember this, it's not just about a business that cash flows, it's your ability to build a business that you can sell. And it's not just about making a lot of money, it's saving and investing the money that you make. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. So the next time you see someone flaunting all of their Lambos and giant houses, I personally wonder, what percentage of their income are they saving and investing? How much is in their retirement accounts? Are they maxing out their kids' college savings plans? Just a thought. Now, business number three is a coaching or consulting company. Consulting is one of the oldest and most legitimate businesses out there. Basically, people are paying for advice. You have companies like Deloitte, KPMG, McKinsey, Bain, and BCG who are all giant consulting companies. You can consult in accounting, finance and tech, operations, and the list goes on. These companies produce hundreds of billions of dollars in sales. Just KPMG alone made $35 billion in 2022. Now, you don't need to be a huge consulting firm, but you can build a consulting business that does serious cash flow. The cool thing about these businesses is that your startup costs are pretty limited and you can be the subject matter expert in the beginning and not really have any labor employees and have very high profit margin. As you grow, you bring on more consultants and scale up from there. Assuming you don't make yourself the face of the business or name it after you, you still have the ability to sell the business one day. Now number four is online businesses. Now people really seem to hate the term influencer, but the reality is the term creator is probably the most accurate. And it turns out it's a $250 billion industry and on track to double by 2030. Now I started a consulting business, but use social media as my way to get clients. Since then, I've done over $1.6 million in sales and counting. There's so many ways to make money though. You can do affiliate marketing, which is selling other people's products. You can create your own products and so much more. Basically anyone with a phone and a computer and a little resourcefulness has the opportunity to create a successful business. The secret here is to find a specific niche to start out in and stay focused on solving problems for that niche. Now remember that business is mainly about one thing. It's solving a problem for other people. If you have that as your main intention, it can lead you to getting rich and creating the income and wealth that you want by focusing on helping other people. The more people you help, the more money you make. The hardest part is often just finding your niche. A lot of times it's starting with what you know or have experience in at the moment. So my niche that I started out with was franchises. Not because I wanted to be the franchise guy, quite opposite. I actually did not want to be the franchise guy. I wanted to talk about money and law of attraction and manifesting and personal development, all the cool stuff that I was passionate about. But because when I started my online business, I owned multiple franchises and was actively running them. That was the low hanging fruit. That's what made the most sense 
to create the money that I wanted to create. And I realized that a lot of people had an interest in franchising, but didn't know much about how it worked or how to cut through the noise and find the ones that actually make money and are proven to be successful. So in this video, I break down seven franchise businesses that make a lot of money and show you their startup cost and their specific earnings. It's got over 100,000 views to date. You've probably never heard of them and wouldn't find them on your own. I did the hard work so you don't have to. Remember to subscribe before you go and I'll see you on the next one.